Columbia ground. Good morning, Part Navia 357, Part members at Mike Hangers with Charlie, southeast bound. Remember 17, clear for takeoff. You want to head for 49 issues? Yeah, yeah, let's head to Mount St. Helens here in the blast zone. All Jeff the Lewis has spent his career tracking all kinds of animals. But today's search is special. This is one we've been looking for for a long time. Animals that haven't been seen in these mountains for 70 years. At least, not until recently. When Lewis started bringing them back. Who hasn't done one? Okay, can you stay right there too and watch that animal come out? Everybody get your camera out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's about the size of an otter. It lives in the forest. It's a furry carnivore. They're a beautiful, charismatic, mid-sized, somewhat chunky weasel. Known as the fisher. When you say fisher, and everybody goes, kingfisher? Or are you, are you talking about somebody with a fishing rod? Or what are you talking about? The fishers Lewis is talking about are rarely seen by most people. Now he's part of a group of scientists who want to make them a more common sight across western Washington, like they were in the 1800s. Back then, fishers ranged from northern California to British Columbia, but so did fur trappers. By the mid-1900s, Washington state was down to its last few animals, while BC had fishers to spare. Lewis helped bring fishers from Canada to the Olympic Peninsula first, in 2008. We ended up getting 90 that we released in there over three years, and that's looking really positive. In 2015, success in the Olympics opened the door to a new release program in the South Cascade mountain range. But it's not as simple as releasing animals into the woods. We're putting them to the test. How do they deal with this, boy, I just landed on Mars kind of scenario? So they equipped them with tracking devices and followed them. We want to confirm, especially early on in a reintroduction, that females are having babies. If there's enough reproduction, that's going to help make that a self-sustaining population. So if you look real close, you see her run into the trees right there? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> By combining basic radio technology and long hours in a plane, listening to static, eventually, here we go. I heard something. And you hear a beep, beep, beep. Oh, yeah. Wow, we're getting a boomer now. Guess what? That's 88. 88. Son of a gun. She crossed back across the road. Woohoo! Nice. OK, hit me. 11, 10. We can circle right around it and then hit a mark on our GPS and get a very precise location for that animal at that time. Then, Lewis joins a team of other scientists and takes his search to the ground. When we get up on top of listen again, and I'm betting we're going to get her off to the west. Their goal is to track the animals to more precise locations and set up motion sensor cameras. It's one of the few ways to document whether the population is growing. We're closer than ever. We had an indication that um, one of our females was denning and we went out, set up cameras for a two-week period. So we're about 80 yards from the potential den site that we are looking for. Lily's den, hopefully. She's super close this way. Hey, guys, I got her super close right there over there. So she's not far away. She's still moving a little bit. The search continues until... Right here, I just heard her. We might be able to track her back to a tree. We'll go in and try to find a specific tree to focus on and set up cameras aimed at that potential den tree. They look for telltale signs, like scratch marks on the bark, fur snagged on branches, and other clues. They love taking poops on logs. Wow, lots of hair in this one. Yeah. Somebody definitely spent a lot of time in this tree. At the top of the tree, there's another positive sign. A cavity big enough for a female fisher and her young, but small enough to keep out predators. We tracked her right to this area. Uh, I didn't see her go in and out of it. It could be a dense site, but it could be a rest site. It could just be a nice hole in a tree. 
but since we're here, it's worth checking out. That's a good spot as any. We put some cameras that are facing the tree to see if she is coming in and out. And we also put some cameras that are facing outside to see if she's just in the general area, hoping to get some clues. Weeks later, they begin sifting through hundreds of photos. And most of them aren't much to look at. Maybe it's a fisher. Maybe it's a raccoon. It's a black-brown blob. They get shots of moving branches, squirrels, elk, and even a bobcat. But eventually, they find what they've been searching months for. Yeah, that's the one. She's coming down head first, and in her mouth, she's got a really sizable kit. That's a lot of kit to handle for that mama. For most people, it may look like another brown blob. But for these scientists, it's the first bit of hard evidence showing that fishers could survive here long term. We've seen good survival among the ones we released. Now we've also got the documentation of reproduction. Doesn't mean that it's ultimately successful, but it's a step in the direction that you really want. And for the Pacific Northwest, a step backward to a wilder time in its history.